<laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> you know, I'm a Bears fan. And I love how sometimes I always ask myself the question, why did I just end up falling in love with this team? Why did I like the mediocre mediocrity we were getting? <laughs> Mitchell Trubisky is going to be the starter in 2020. You're telling me Trey Burden might come back next year? And Adam Shaheen? Maybe Leonard, too? <laughs> and don't forget about the trash O-line play. And don't forget, too, we might also be seeing more Matt Nagy bubble screen play calling. <laughs> I swear, this team, uh, you know, I find more things funny about this press conference than, you know, just some other things. I find it funny because, again, Ryan Pace, he went off to go hide in his little burrow in Hollis Hall or wherever he and Matt Nagy are going to go to talk about the issues that need to be fixed, um, you know, later down the road when they need to be addressed now, um, you know, uh, I just find it funny how Ryan Pace is such... Actually, I find it so great that Ryan Pace will actually stick to his gums. And you know what? He still has the courage of his convictions to basically still trust in every one of the failed draft picks outside of Roquan Smith that are still on this team that they can turn into great players, that they can be pro bowlers, that they can be something that just need a little bit more work. And this is what we get. No, I'm being serious right now. This is what we get, Ryan Pace. You telling us more bold face lies to our face again and again and again. I'm right here in California, so I had to wake up early to hear this press conference. The press conference started at 7 o'clock my time. <sighs> You're telling me that's all you had to say? It don't matter. The press conference started off looking like it was going to be pretty decent from the aspect saying that, you know, at least we had somebody from the team, you know, actually finally admit that they failed to do the expectations they were held to. I'll give Ryan Pace credit that he, he admitted that the team should have done better than what was given and we failed to meet your guys' expectations. Please, spare me the BS. Next time, don't make promises you can't keep. And then it just started going downhill from downhill from downhill. And yes, you can say, but it's just a press conference. They're saying things and look, we need to wait till they do things in the off season to see if they back up what they said in the press conference. Or, you know, some other crap. There were some people saying you can't put too much stock into this press conference. They're gonna say it for good PR reasons. They're not gonna go out and blast the team. And yes, I know that. What they need to do in the offseason is obviously do things and get some things done. But there was just some things in this press conference that were said that literally did not make me feel good going into the 2020 season. Obviously, you'd think I'd start off with Trubisky first, but I think I'm going to save that thing for last because that's going to be obviously the main talking point. I'm going to talk about a little bit about the smaller thing. 
Now, if you did not catch the Chicago Bears, Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace, season-ending press conference, it happened this morning um, where basically Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace answered the questions about, you know, many of the people's, sure, well, Chicago Bear fans' concerns of what they need to do going forward to do better for the 2020 season, you know. I understand it's only two games after the season's removed, but if you were going to say that, you might as well freaking did the press conference after the Super Bowl's over. <sighs> but this is the reason why this press conference depressed me and made me look like there is no hope for this team to improve. And yes, there has still been no moves made. But some of the things they were saying in this press conference were just asinine. And I'm going to be kidding. And I was literally watching this off my phone. And listening to this, well, listening off my phone. And some of the things they were saying in the press conference sound really damn stupid. You ask me. So let's go to the talking points. There's really only really four major things that they talked about. One, which was the biggest talking point, was Trubisky. We'll get to that late, last. They talked, like, slightly about the O-line. They talked about the tight ends, refer referring to Trey Burton and Adam Shaheen. They talked about Adam. They talked about Leonard Floyd a bit. Um, they did mention about some players, like Anthony Miller. He needs surgery on the same shoulder again. Um, Trey Burton, he might need surgery for his hip. Trubisky, they said they don't know if he's going to need freaking surgery. Oh, of course you're not going to say. You're going to say the other guy's going to need surgery. But, of course, your golden boy, um, what is it? You don't know if he needs surgery. Um, they talked a little bit about Mac, about production and stuff. He wants more production out of the team, which I totally agree. Um, and that's really it. Um, they also talked a little bit about Nagy's play calling stuff like that. And that's re and then, you know, that's really it. That's really, that's really some of the only points of talking about they talked in this press conference. Not much, because most of this question they were asking were mostly about Trubisky. Like, they, they all give the reporters credit. They kept the heat going with the Trubisky questions because literally they were pinning them to the ears and stuff like this. I'll get to Trubisky last because I have something to say about that. And you already know my stances on Trubisky if you've seen my videos in the past. Anyways, let's talk about Leonard Floyd first because they brought it up. The fact that they said they really like what Leonard Floyd's been doing. <laughs> Oh my goodness. They really enjoy what Leonard Floyd's been doing. <sighs> man, 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 man. They must have not been watching what I've been watching because Leonard Floyd, that's one of the first times I've heard of his name in a lot, quite a long time. Well, he made a little bit of a decent play in the Minnesota back of Viking game, but for the most part of this season, I didn't hear his name whatsoever. Mostly because he was getting just straight up abused in the pass rush. Um, and he was in a contract year after we picked up his option or something. So, my question is this. What the hell did they like in Leonard Floyd? He hasn't done jack nothing. He was a no sighting this year. So, Huh? He only had like three sacks on this season. The only game I remember him showing up really good was the first game back in week one against the Green Bay Packers. After that, he was dead the rest of the season. I barely heard even a mention of his name. Same goes for Cleo Mack, too. But whatever. Okay, they like a pass rusher who is at who's didn't make come to didn't do anything this season. So okay, let's move on. Um they talk a little bit about the tight ends and Adam Shaheen and Trey Burton. I'm going to get to Adam Shaheen first. The Ryan Pace was talking so glowingly about Adam Shaheen, like he really is still going to fix and mold into the tight end he always saw. Baby Gronk. 
when the dude is horrible this year to the point he just got benched and basically was put on IR when he was still healthy, which goes to show the dude was never good and he never will be good. Cut ties with him, get rid of him now. But it looks like from what Pace said, you know, Shaheem's under contract. So, you know, that means we will still move on and progress with him and we'll see how he got. You know, you can, you know, Ryan Pace, you can't cut guys who are still on contract, you know. You can just release them outright. But, you know, okay, let, let, let's not address Adam Shaheen's issue. Um, you know, the inconsistencies were with him always not being on the field. No, the inconsistencies with him was being hurt. And when he does get playing time on the field, he doesn't do anything for us. He's a literal coward. That's what happens when you draft guys from Division Three schools that you never hear of before. Jesus. You know, you think you draft, what is it, you know, Division One players. Nothing wrong about Division Three football players. But the chance of them being decent to good players in the NFL, that's not seen every day. Again, another flop on that on your part, Matt. Uh, not Matt Nagy. Um, Ryan Pace. So continue to suck off Adam Shaheen. And when he, he when then if he stays on the team next year and gives you again no tight end production from the tight end spot, again, again, I'll be the first ones to say, we told you so. Why keep this guy? Cut him now before anything. Let's talk a little bit about Trey Burton. What more do I have to say about Trey Burton? First thing, I just gotta say this. I don't know what the hell Trey Burton's been doing. But the fool's been running away from the team, or he's been running away from playing football since the Eagles wild card game. It's like he doesn't even want to show up anymore. How can you condone a guy? I'm sorry if I'm a if I'm a boss of somebody and I found out one of my people's been out for you know how many weeks and they haven't been doing their job. Why keep him? Cut him too. I could care less about a cap hit or whatever. You know. Cut, cut Burton. He hasn't done anything. All he's been doing is he's been Adam Shaheen 2.0. Injury ridden and he's done nothing for us. You know, really, he only did much for us the first season. For like the first couple half of the season after that, he was dead too. Again, please tell me why do we need Adam, I mean Trey Burton and Adam Shaheen on this team. Burton doesn't need to be here anymore. He clearly looks like he can just go collect his checks and move on with life and, you know, deal with his ex his anxiety issues or whatever. And I know that's not something to, you know, sleep on, but your know, injury issues when you don't know what injury. And like, I'm like, I'm thinking this dude has a hip injury or something like that, And they're bringing up another injury and stuff. I'm like, dude, come on. Get rid of Trey Burton. He sucks too, you know. My goodness. My goodness. I cannot believe that. That they're going to stick up for those guys. And I know they're only saying that for good PR. But please. You saw the crap on the field this year. There's no excuses. Maggie's play calling. They talked a little bit about this. Reporters talked about it. Ryan Pace. I was obviously when I asked that question. When somebody asked him. What did you think of Nagy's play calling? And if you think you should think about getting another person to come in to play call for the team. I already knew that Brian Pace was not going to freaking talk crap on Matt Nagy right in Matt Nagy's face. If that would have happened, that's literally the equivalent of saying, guess what? You didn't do your job correctly. I didn't like it. And you're going to be demoted for it. And guess what? Of course, Ryan Pace wouldn't say that he hated Nagy's um, play calling issues in the press conference right next to Nagy. Now, maybe behind closed doors, yes. He'll probably talk about more about that. But in the public, of course he's not. Because the Nagy would give this probably pissed off look at him, looking at him like, who the hell are you talking to? I'm right here, you know. I guarantee you if he would said that, Nagy might have clocked him, clocked him right above, right across his head during the press conference if he had said that. Or he would have given him a dirty look, or at least... Personally, if that means we're going to get more freaking naggy bubble screens again, please. 
I would rather drink before I see that. Because again, I said, I said it in my last Bears video. The bubble screens never work. So stop running them. Again, also play call to your team, your, your team's strengths, your players' strengths and weaknesses. If you know there's something that they don't like doing, or they, that they're not strong at, don't let them do it. Stop implementing a game plan to where you are just, no, we're going to run this. No ifs, ands, or buts. I don't care about your strengths or weaknesses. Move on. Yeah, please. When this team should be a power running team, you want to make this into a pass happy offensive team with a quarterback that can't seem to pass a ball past 10 or more yards. So please spare me the crap. And I, and I swear, if I see more bubble screens again next year, again, I'll just have alcohol right next to me and I'll start drinking. Because I am sorry. That never works and it never will work. Please. For teams, every time I see teams running the bubble screen, it never works. It gets nothing. They, it's shut down with a snap of your finger. Please. A bubble screen is literally one receiver blocking for somebody. For another receiver who's just running a little measly out, outward route to the sideline. Catches it. And guess what? It don't matter because guess what? If it's man coverage, the safety just comes down to cover the person and runs straight at the bubble screen person. So guess what? You're getting tackled for a losses. And guess what? You only need one person to just hold on long enough for the linebackers and the rest of the defense to come and tackle the guy. So keep, tell keep telling me the bubble screen is going to work because it doesn't work. The bubble screen is literally one of the worst plays today where you can run it. It's honestly literally a JV uh, really, it's honestly literally just a high school play to run. It's a high school play to run. That only really works in high school because kids are young and they don't know how to properly tackle as good as the next person. And I found in college, typically that don't work because guess what? It's a faster game. <sighs> again, keep running the bubble screens and you're going to, again, you're going to make me get my TV and throw it out the window. Because I swear, I do not like seeing the bubble screens. And they're really finding ways to really get on my nerves. <sighs> now let's get to the biggest thing. The thing where I just crack up laughing for the most thing. And the thing all Bears fans anticipated to hear. And that was the talk about Mitchell Trubisky. The Chicago Bears still are... Actually, still, your starting quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. You know, the Trubisky supporters, they're probably just throwing a party. Be like, yes, he's getting another year. He's going to prove you guys, you haters, wrong. The Bear fans that turn their back on him. Then he's going to prove you wrong. What is he going to prove me wrong about? Unless he has some kind of breakout season next year where he's thrown for 40 touchdowns and three interceptions. He ain't proving me wrong on anything. He's the same guy he's always been since we drafted him. He does a few nice things in the game. You know, some things you say, you know, that was actually a really nice pass. He really threw with the courage of his convictions. And then you have other times where you're questioning, like, the hell are you doing, idiot? <sighs> the moment the press conference started off, Ryan Pace already confirmed the fool is going to be the 2020 starter for your Chicago Bears. So first thing off the bat, guess what? That doesn't look good for the incoming free agents who you're trying to compete for the starting quarterback position. Yeah. Hmm. I'm obviously better than Mitchell Trubisky. But you said he's the starter. There's no open competition. Which is honestly one of my freaking um, quarterback pitches to the quarterbacks that you'd be signing for the team to be the, either the backup or the, the starter over Trubisky. And the standpoint is, I would say this. Listen, it'd be open competition. Anybody can win the starter position, starting job for the quarterback of this team. But yet, you want to bring back Mitchell Trubisky, 
Oh, also another thing, they did not talk about the fifth year option. They'll probably pick it up anyways because they have to if they're gonna unless they resign him to a stupid extension. <sighs> um, but um, yeah. Why is he the starter for twenty twenty? I don't know why. And this goes to show that maybe Brian Pace needs more freaking glasses. Because I'm sure he did not watch, you know, this past Sunday's game when Mitchell Trubisky barely got across and barely could pass over 200 yards against a second string defense in the Minnesota Vikings. You know, I hope he, I'm guessing he didn't watch the, you know, the um, Green Bay, not the Green Bay game, well, the first Green Bay game. Um, but I was talking about the Kansas City game against Patrick Mahomes where he literally was garbage for most of that game if not the entire game um what else what else what else what else oh yes the the denver broncos game he was garbage that game too oh wait wait, wait, wait. there's another game oh wait no the saints game he was terrible oh and he was coming off an injury off a bye he was awful wait 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 the the, the, the philadelphia eagles game he wasn't no he wasn't that good either and then the rams game yes he was garbage well he was all right. Um, who, who else? Who else? Who else? I'm trying to think of any other opponents where he literally did next to nothing. Oh, wait. It was almost half the season. And when he played good, he played against the bad teams. Like, you know, two times against the freaking Detroit Lions. Oh, the Detroit Lions have one of the worst passing defenses in the league. The Washington Redskins. Oh, they were garbage this year. Hmm, what's else? The Dallas Cowboys are, we know, look, the Cowboys are overrated as hell. I can point out almost more than 10 games on this dang schedule where he was literally trash for most parts of the season. And this is the guy that you want to be in your starter going to next year? Yeah, please. Please spare me the BS. I cannot wait to make my season thoughts video because clearly these guys are blind well ryan pace is blind he, he must sure have a lot of confidence to stick in with mitchell trubisky when he showed up and like literally nothing he gave us nothing this year again ryan pace clown clown at his finest you cannot lie to me how is this guy Blah, 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 deserves to be the starter next year when the dude could barely even do anything. The last game should have been the game where it's like, okay, this guy, this guy just don't have it. He can't even be backup defenses. <sighs> or he can barely get past backup defenses by the over, barely throwing over 200 yards. Yeah, they said, well, he needs to be more consistent and he needs to definitely improve. Yada, 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 yada. We've been saying that since the season started, dude. You're now saying this in on January 31st, New Year's Eve, saying that he needs to be more consistent. Please, 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 please. And then Matt Nagy is talking about him saying, the number one thing I need him to do is to be a master at Reading coverages, different types of coverages. <laughs> now that's a good joke. That's a good joke. Be a master at reading defensive coverages. <laughs> Make me laugh when you got a quarterback in him that he can't even read a defense the moment the Defense is out on the field. And you want him to read coverages better. Again, the idiot can't read a defense the moment the ball is, the line is set, everything's going, and he looks around and stuff like that. Even with Nagy in his ear, he can't read the defense. I think Nagy freaking talked about it. Was it? One of the games, what is it? I don't know. He didn't bring up. He just said one of the games we had. What is it? There was a guy that was open for a touchdown, but he chucked it down. Instead of throwing the touchdown. 
Yeah, he can read the defense, Ulra. He, yeah, he needs to be a master of reading coverages. Oh, yeah. So, so hold up. This past offseason, you said, you know, this is year 202 offense where everyone's going to have complete mastery of this offense. Now this year is he still needs to develop and be more consistent. And he needs to be better at reading coverages. It sounds more like, the, but all, all together, it still sounds like more, he needs more time to develop. BS I've been hearing again when he's already had like over 40 stars in his career as an NFL court quarterback starting. And, you know, you're telling me he still needs to develop into the quarterback shape shifting. No, 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 buddy. No, no, no. See, this is the thing that pisses me off the most when they were talking about Trubisky and the way that they're saying. And this is the thing that upsets me about the Trubisky fanboys and the supporters saying he needs more time. We don't have more time. This team is running on a short leash. A short leash. That defense is running on a short leash. More and more, if you waste your time with this guy like you did with Jay Cutler and Rex Grossman and other quarterbacks in the past who haven't turned out to be good um, for the Chicago Bears, you're only wasting the defense even more. This is what I don't understand why the Trubisky fanboys are trying to come up with their points and make their cases to why Trubisky needs to stay on this team. Oh, he needs a little bit more time. Matt Nagy's not giving him options, not giving him a good play call set. Yada, 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 BS. He don't got no offensive line. He don't got no tight end. Yada, 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 yada. I could care less about all those issues right now. The issue right now and the main issue is the quarterback. It is the most important position in all of sports right now, if not the most important position in the NFL currently. So you have no points anymore. Please tell me what points you can make to say that this guy still needs another chance. We've given him chance after chance after chance, game after game after game, and he still hasn't failed to show us anything. Well, he looked good in that Lions game. He looked good in that Cowboys game. They were garbage. Again, what has he done against the good teams? Where's your question? Where's your answers to that? You remember the Saints game? Yes, Matt Nagy's play calling was bad because he only ran the ball seven times as opposed to making Trubisky throw the ball 50 times. But he was trying to make him look like he was Drew Brees. Remember the Chiefs game? Remember this past week against the Vikings? What more do I have to say about this guy? He's an average quarterback. Matt Forte said it best on the NBC sh show after the Vikings game was over last week. He's a serviceable backup quarterback. I'll take Trubisky as the backup quarterback. I don't care. I just want someone that can come in, beat him out, and move on, and make Ryan Pace admit that he was wrong. They did talk a little bit about Mahomes and, you know, Watson in comparison. And yes, you can make a good point saying, well, not all quarterbacks are the same. But at the same time, wait, who's doing better? Who are in the playoffs right now? Oh, wait, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, and Deshaun Watson. This guy isn't. You got the NFC North rivals literally laughing at you guys right now saying, look at these guys. These guys know this dude sucks. Lions. Well, we have Matthew Stafford. He's a nice quarterback. He can do with some things. It's just we just, you know, have bad management. Viking fans. Kirk Cousins is... Just basically a slightly better version of Mitchell Trubisky, but whatever. And then you get the Packer fans laughing down. They're like, we've always owned the Bears anyways to begin with, but now we're going to own them more for the next two years again? Okay, because we have nothing to fear. They have no quarterback again. Please tell me, Packer fans would be feared if we at least had Deshaun Watson on our team, if we had made the right draft. And yet you want to stick with this bum? Please, spare me the crap. 
The dude can't not read a defense. How much more learning does this dude need to have? How much learning? Because the way he's learning, he's looking like he's, it, the way they're talking about it, it look, or the way he's lo it's looking like, he's learning like he's going through elementary school, then the middle school, then high school, and then four years of college, and then, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's like they have some high aspirations, like he's going to turn into some great quarterback. Like, he's going to just click it, and then all of a sudden, he becomes the next Tom Brady, or next Drew Brees. Our next Aaron Rodgers. I've been hearing a lot of comparisons. He could be the next Drew Brees. You know, Drew Brees didn't really start off too hot when his career started. And then guess what? He turned it on in New Orleans and boom. I don't have time to waste, what, another decade for another Drew Brees? Or a potential Drew Brees? And what happens if he eventually turns into that type of quarterback five years down the road? It'll be too late because guess what? The defense will probably be, half the defense will be gone. You know, they don't want to waste their time. We won't have near subsequent weapons like we, see, see, this is the crap I'm talking about. And this is what I'm talking about when the Trubisky supporters say, we just needs more time. He has no time. His time is up. But I'm guessing, I'm going to, I'm guessing, well, in my opinion, his time is up. So, yawn. Yawn, 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 yawn. And if they don't bring in competition, which they say they're going to bring in competition for every position, yeah, like you're going to make promises you can't keep. Keep making those promises, Ryan Pace, because trust me, I'm going to be looking very closely to that quarterback position because I want a drafted rookie quarterback and I want a veteran quarterback to come in and challenge Trubisky and hopefully overthrow him. They better be looking at film a lot this good and say that blah, 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 blah. You know, this team, it's not going to go anywhere with Mitchell Trubisky at the helm. I don't know why Ryan Pace just doesn't see that. He's just being an idiot. He's just being an idiot. If you're telling me that Mitchell Trubisky deserves another year of starting as the Bears quarterback, you're lying. You're lying. You can say you're giving up all hope and you haven't seen what he could really do. I've seen it all. He's just an average dude. Just admit it, Trubisky supporters. He's an average dude. You can believe, but anyways, the, the Trubisky supporters, you can believe whatever you want. But I'm just going to tell this to you before you click out the video or get upset or put in my comment section all the hate saying and whatever. But I'm just going to say this. When next year, if he has a bad year again, I'll be the first one to tell you, I told you so. And if he proves me wrong, I'll give credit where credit's due. But I'll be the first person to say, I told you so, that this was a fluke, this was a mistake, and it won't work out. I'll be the first one to say, I told you so. So, for the Trubisky supporters, they can F off of me, because I could care less. The Trubisky supporters are in some la-la land thinking he's going to turn out to be the next Aaron Rodgers of this division. Please. I could, you can only dream. What more do you have to see? What more do you have to see? So, yeah. The Trubisky supporters, they can F off in my opinion. I don't see how you can support this guy who hasn't done anything. As for Trubisky, you better get up on that lab, buddy, and you better start reading coverages, all sorts of defenses, and blah, 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 blah. Because, man, this is a big year for you. Because if you fail to, if, and if, if, they get the, if they get more quarterback competition up in there, this is it. Technically, your leash has been extended. So guess what? You know, it's promising for Trubisky that he's going to be still the starting quarterback. But at the same time, if they get that competition in there. Uh-oh, time is up and you are on the clock. Because the moment you start messing up, the moment I guarantee you Matt Nagy will take you out for the next quarterback that will want to come in and run the offense efficiently. So, Mitchell Trubisky, you may not check this video out, but I hope you get into the lab. I hope you get into the, you know, film session and you read some defenses. And I mean it this year. I mean it this offseason. The one day, the one thing you should do, like you should pray every day, is 
He needs to go up into the film study. He needs to go up into house hall. And instead of chillaxing and having a good time, not saying he can do that. One time, every day for at least an hour or two, you need to go watch some film. Critique yourself, and you need to read defenses in film. Because that's the only way you're going to get better, and it's the only way where you can find your ways to improve. Otherwise, your time, oh, it's going to be over by week one. Anyways, this press conference was not promising at all. We always have to wait to see what the Bears do in the offseason when it comes to competition, if they want to get competition in there, especially for their golden boy. Um, but we'll see. Will they get a draft a quarterback this year? Hopefully they do. Will they pick up a veteran quarterback in free agency and do the tight end strategy? Hopefully they do. Because guess what? It's working out for the tight ends because, man, it saved their season. And it might as well may have earned, you know, Ryan Tannehill a new contract on another team. You know, some of these veteran quarterbacks, yes, they may not be good. But as they always say, maybe a change of scenery is always the best thing for them. Whether it's Andy Dalton, Marcus Mariota, maybe a change of scenery is better for them. Because the moment Mitchell Trubisky starts messing up, the moment I want the plug to be pulled. There's no excuses anymore, Trubisky. You mess up the first two, three games, I want your ass out of the starting lineup. I'm not here to play any more games now. This Bears organization is finding ways to piss me off even more. And again, the fact that they announced that live in person that Trubisky will still be the Bears 2020 starter. You're losing the fan bases. I said it before and I'll say it again. You're going to lose the fan base. You're going to have Bears fans stop watching if you keep this guy as a starter longer than what he should be. I'll just say this. If somehow he's here for another four years, you can best believe I'm never watching another Bears game until this guy is gone. And that's me as a Bears fan saying that. I will never watch another Bears game until he is gone. I'm not going to sit through another Jay Cutler situation again where there's a quarterback that's here longer than how he should have been. We would save much more years if we had not have kept Jay Cutler for as long as we kept him. But if you want to do the same thing as Trubisky, I'll just let you know. I'm clicking off as a, as a Bears fan Literally till he's off this team. Because until they get it right, yada, yada, yada. They really do think the Bear fans are idiots. Did they not hear the boos in the stadium? That was called because of pathetic play calling and pathetic quarterback play. We'll keep booing. So going to next year, Bears fans, keep booing. Because guess what? It's looking like things are not going to get for the brighter. Even though they have an opponent list that looks like they can make the playoffs. And if they don't make the playoffs this year, guys need to lose their job. Matt Nagy, Ryan Pace... Everybody's on the hot seat. Everybody's on the hot seat. This is a big year for the Bears management. A big year for the Bears management. I'll say that in my ending thoughts video now, which will probably be uploaded Friday. I know I said it would be uploaded either tomorrow or um, Thursday, but it's more likely going to be uploaded Friday. Um, so it's a big year for those guys because they're on the hot seat now. There's, if, there's no breaking it now. I think if they fail to make the playoffs again, and they have another lackluster season again, jobs are going to be gone. Anyways, I'm going to get out of here. It's been Cam for 15. If you like the video, leave a like. If there's a comment you want to put down in the comment regarding this press conference and your thoughts on it, and again, the lies spouted by not only, and to an extent, Matt Nagy, but again, to the rat himself in the organization, Ryan Pace. If you have something you want to put in the comments regarding what he said, go right ahead. I'd like to hear your guys' comments. Other than that, leave a like on the video. Hit that subscribe button if you want to get more Chicago Bears content. Um, again, I'll say it. You'll be getting the season, my season ending thoughts on the... Um, on the Bears 2019 season, which I will have a guest on that video and stuff like that. So other than that, I'm going to get out of here.
I'm gonna see you guys on the next freaking video when it comes to this team. And it's good to hear the press conference because now there's gonna be points made for the ending thoughts preview. So till then, it's been Ken for 15. I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have a great day.